Some of the most powerful weapons in both the Fallout games and Fallout universe are the Gauss guns, but could something like them actually work in real life? Today we're going to take a look at these Gauss weapons, how they work in Fallout, the science behind them, and whether or not they could ever be found on a real life battlefield. Let's get into it. In Fallout, Gauss weapons are some of the most powerful firearms in the wasteland. They use electromagnetic force instead of traditional gunpowder to fire projectiles at an extremely high velocity. Their name comes from Carl Frederick Gauss, a German mathematician whose work in electromagnetism helped explain how electric currents generate magnetic fields. This is the same principle that these weapons rely on. Unlike conventional guns which ignite propellant, i.e. gunpowder, to create an explosion that pushes a bullet forward, Fallout's Gauss weapons use a series of electromagnetic coils to accelerate an explosive projectile at incredible speeds. Now, to clear up a bit of confusion before we get any further, because Fallout's weapons use electromagnetic coils, they would be more accurately described as coil guns rather than as gauss guns. Often mistaken for one another, gauss guns use permanent magnets to accelerate a projectile similar to the physics of a Newton's cradle, while coil guns again use coiled electromagnets to accelerate a projectile instead. Very similar yes, but also different. And don't even get me started on railguns. Anywho, Mechanically, the latest iteration of Gauss weapons in Fallout, those after the Anchorage era ones in lore, have a distinct charge up feature. Holding the trigger would seem to build up energy in the weapon's capacitors, with a full charge dealing maximum damage. This makes them function more like energy weapons than conventional firearms, hence their energy weapon classifications in most of the games despite firing a traditional projectile over a concentrated beam of light or superheated plasma. The in-game ammunition such as 2mm EC rounds or microfusion cells, depending on the game, are meant to interact with the weapon's electromagnetic field, charging it up, allowing for their extreme velocity and armor-piercing capability. Emil Pagliarulo, the lead writer for the Fallout series, confirms this, writing in a Bethesda blog. The gun energizes and magnetizes a standard projectile round. Those are already preloaded into the weapon, and are in that giant clip attached to the side of the weapon. We did it this way because we knew we wanted to have an energy weapon equivalent of the sniper rifle. So the ammo loaded into the weapon is only meant to charge up the gun while it fires some sort of explosive projectile. Again, that is to say it has the energy weapon classification, but acts like a traditional firearm. The first Gauss weapons to appear in Fallout were the M72 Gauss rifle and the PPK-12 Gauss pistol in Fallout 2. Interestingly, these weren't classified as an energy weapon, but rather as small guns. They were high damage, long range guns that used 2mm EC rounds to punch through even the toughest of enemies. Later Gauss weapons in the Fallout series would be inspired by their mechanics and design. In Fallout 3, the Gauss rifle was reintroduced in the Operation Anchorage DLC. This version tried to keep the similar rifle style appearance to the M72 Gauss rifle and had the same high damage and precision that was expected of a Gauss gun. But there were some differences. One, it was now classified as an energy weapon rather than a small gun, and it had a knockdown effect on critical strikes. Fallout 3's Gauss Rifle was one of the game's best long-range weapons. The Gauss Rifle made a return in Fallout New Vegas. It also expanded the lineup with the YCS-186, a unique Gauss Rifle that can only be acquired if the Wild Wasteland trait is not taken, with even greater firepower than the standard version. Then, Fallout 4 reimagined Gauss weapons once again, giving them this railgun style look. This, combined with the modular nature of many of Fallout 4's weapons, allowed for mods like better barrels, scopes, and capacitors, 
making them even deadlier. In Fallout 76, Gauss technology was applied beyond just rifles. We not only saw the return of the Gauss pistol, but 76 also introduced the Gauss shotgun and Gauss minigun, each with different strengths. The Gauss minigun, for example, trades precision and range for sheer suppressive firepower. These weapons are the perfect hybrid between traditional firearms and energy weapons. They are high-tech, but still have that industrial and powerful feel. Nothing like charging up a massive explosive blast to take down enemies with ease. But while Fallout's Gauss weapons might seem like sci-fi inventions that fit only in a world that weaponizes everything, did you know that this technology exists in our own world as well? In reality, Gauss weapons, or in our case, coil guns, are very different from their Fallout counterparts. While the core concept remains the same, using electromagnetism to propel a projectile, real-world coil guns operate under strict physical limitations that make them far less practical than traditional firearms. Just to go over how they actually work in real life, a coil gun relies on a series of magnetic coils along the barrel. As electricity flows through these coils, they generate a powerful magnetic field that pulls a ferromagnetic projectile, i.e. a bullet made of magnetic material, forward. By rapidly deactivating each coil as the projectile moves past, the weapon ensures continuous acceleration down the barrel, on-off, on-off, to keep the projectile moving and accelerating. Theoretically, this allows for incredibly high projectile velocities, and unlike conventional firearms, there's no need for chemical propellants or moving parts like a hammer or bolt. Coil guns also produce minimal recoil, since there's no explosive force behind the shot pushing the weapon back into you. It's just pure electromagnetic acceleration. However, there is a catch. Efficiency. How much energy is inputted relative to the final kinetic energy of the projectile. You want to mitigate as much energy loss as possible in order to make an efficient coil gun. At low speeds, a significant amount of energy ends up being lost as heat. This, combined with needing powerful capacitors to generate the required electrical current, makes coil guns not very practical as replacements for firearms. Then, as expected, as more energy is required, the bulkier and bigger the weapon becomes, again making them less practical. Despite these challenges, coil gun technology has seen plenty of real-world experimentation, though mostly in research settings rather than active military deployment. Plenty of small-scale coil guns have been built by hobbyists and universities. These mostly fire at lightweight projectiles at relatively low speeds, considered to have the similar projectile power to that of an air gun. That said, coil guns do have potential in specialized applications. Electromagnetic acceleration is being explored for launching payloads into space. Research companies like NASA have proposed using coil gun-like technology to assist spacecraft in reaching orbit without relying entirely on chemical rockets. While a handheld battlefield ready coil gun like the ones in Fallout remains far fetched, the principles behind it are being tested and refined in other technological fields. If we want to go back to the topic of futuristic weaponry, similar to Fallout's Gauss guns, we have to look beyond the coil gun. On the military application side of things, electromagnetic weapons have primarily focused on rail guns rather than coil guns. Rail guns are generally more energy efficient and easier to scale up for high velocity applications. The US Navy, for example, has tested prototype rail guns capable of firing projectiles at speeds exceeding Mach 7. But even still, these projects have struggled with energy demands and durability issues. So while Fallout's Gauss weapons may be exaggerated for gameplay, they aren't entirely outside of the realm of possibility. If the technological limitations can be addressed and improved, 
then we may eventually see electromagnetic weapons that are lightweight and powerful enough for real-world use. But for now, they remain more within the realm of science fiction rather than science fact. The Gauss weapons in Fallout are powerful, visually striking, and just believable enough to feel grounded in reality. They are the perfect blend of the science fiction and retrofuturism style that defines Fallout. While they operate on the same principle of real-world coil guns, they obviously don't face the same major hurdles in energy efficiency and practicality that real coil guns do. So, just remember, next time you one-shot a Wastelander from a mile away, you're not needlessly taking a life. You're just doing science. And science rules. That's all from me today, folks. If you liked the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Join the Discord. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.